Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach, and today we have with us Kevin Taylor, who's the co-founder of Insight. Kevin, welcome to the program. Hey, thanks for having me, Mike. Hey, you're welcome. I'm looking forward to learning from you and seeing what uh, you do for your clients and the difference you make in the community. But um, give us a little bit of your background and uh, what led you down the entrepreneurial path. Yeah, so I spent a handful of years working um, at big brokerages. You know, Scott Trade, which was acquired by TD Ameritrade, which was acquired by Schwab, um, a couple other smaller RIAs along the way. Um, and that kind of became the routine. You, you'd work for a place, you'd work for a guy, you'd get acquired. You know, nothing, nothing coming towards me, and it was just, okay, now you work for a new guy, there's a new process, yeah. you get acquired. And, uh, and that happened pretty routinely. Now, the good news is I found someone that is the absolute best partner I can, could draw up, right, yeah. in all that process, in all that shuffle, and, and, you know, for years, probably from the first moment I met him and just kind of knew he was the right guy, I said, you know, what are we doing in this? And he was interviewing me for the job. I said, what are we doing here interviewing? Let's go start our own business. <laughs> Let's go work for That's ourselves. Hilarious. And, uh, and it took me years of just needling him and saying, Hey, let's go work for ourselves. You know, from the moment I met him and, um, and finally through enough of that shuffle, he had had enough and he said, yep, that was the right time. You know, we were lucky enough to get to pick up some, some letters after our name, some designations, some licenses and, and experience. And then finally, uh, he had had enough and, um, and said, yeah, let's do it. And I said, okay, it's about time. That's, I think that's the right timing. So you know, it's interesting. Just put it out there, out there, out there, and then yeah. You know. And you know, I call I I kind of I, I think this is not my own thing, but I really resonate with this phrase, the law of left field, where you just are grinding away and doing what you know is right, and then opportunities come up what seems like out of left field, but in reality, it's because you're out there getting things done. And that's what, what you just described. It's like you didn't go into that interview looking for, but you just, you know, it, it came about because you were just out there getting things done. I think that's really, yep. really interesting. So, yeah, so that's how we, um, that's how we found each other in all of that. That's how we, you know, we got to have several, you know, meetings, both, you know, while employed and then since then of how would we do things differently? What's what what drives us insane about the the, the job that we were doing? What what are clients telling us? We got plenty of different reps um to have with those yeah. clients. Lots of at bats. And when you get lots of at bats, you get a lot of great feedback. You know exactly yes. you know where you stand. So. so what was when you started your own firm and you both had those, you know, frustrations you pulled from your own past to say, boy, if I could have made things or done things differently, I would do this. What were some of the things that you then um, determined as both of you going, we're no longer going to do it this way because this our new way is the way to do it? Yeah, so uh, we're lucky in that everybody that came into our office wants wants what we have. I mean, mm -hmm. They want the market. They want returns. People want more money. That is not a, a hard thing to sell. Yeah. Um, and so that's what, that's what drives them. That's what brings them in. That's what they want to talk about. But then if we can do an effective job of pivoting from, from that and showing them the much larger picture of that these things don't happen, you don't come to us in years where you had great investment returns and say, now how do I manage my taxes? Yeah. And then in years where you have poor investment returns and say, how do I upgrade my, my investment returns? And you're already on the wrong side of each of those coins. And so what we, you know, what we get to do and what we get to do through our process is try to extract that this isn't all investments, about one third of what we do, you know, but, but a hundred percent of what you want to do when you walk in the door is investments. So we got to yeah. pivot them to all the other elements. And so that was one of the things that working at the larger firms, we never got, we never got the purview of. They came to talk about their investments. They and you never were able to look at the holistic uh, approach. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're channeled in and you're compensated into those things. Bring money yeah. in and we'll talk about this. Bring money in and we'll talk about that. <laughs> you know? But at the end of the day, they're still going to drive you know, their own bus. They're still going to you know, make their own choices, and and we, we you know we were just grinding into all these other elements that that 
are, are honestly, if you ask me, more influential on in how a person makes money over the long term. Yeah. Paying less in taxes shouldn't be a hard concept to sell. And so we said that has to be a cornerstone of what we do. About two thirds yeah. of what we have to do has to be all the other really unsexy things about investing. The background stuff, the reason that the series seven is, you know, hundreds of questions long and not 35 questions on options. And so uh, we had to, we had to get clients looking at all of the other elements um, that drive wealth over decades, as opposed to, you know, a month or two or whatever CNBC is talking about that after. Yep. Whatever the, the, the sound bite of the day is. <laughs> yeah. That gets, that brings them in. I, I, I watch it because I want to, yeah. I want to hear what our clients are hearing. Yeah. Um, because I, I don't want us to be so divorced from that because that's what brings them in the door. That is for sure. But then when but you bring up a good point about attention. the, it's almost like a bucket. You, you, you want more returns, which is pouring the water in the bucket. But if you have a, lacking tax strategy and you could plug some of those hold up, holes up with tax mitigation, now the more water that goes in the bucket stays in the bucket. So it's a mix between, yeah, getting good returns. You need that, obviously, but also you want to keep more of your money in your back pocket. Yeah, absolutely. And and once we start showing them that, that if you take, you know, if you take a beat and you start looking at all the other options, um, you know, that, that, that that's where the impact's going to come from. That's where the cooler heads and the and the and the real long term client, which is a better client, is going to come from. Yeah. So you you have big firm experience, so that's wonderful because you see things from a macro level. You saw some things that weren't um, optimal as far as what you would prefer, so you start your own firm. So what makes you different than some of the smaller mid sized firms? Because now when clients or business owners can come to see what you guys do, obviously there's competitors in your space. What separates you from uh, your competition? Yeah, so I think, what we did and and so the other the other side of that is we got to refer so much business to smaller rias yeah. to partner firms at, at td um that ended up taking you know the best piece of the pie the best clients you know that made made some of the better returns and if you if you paired them off right you know you were compensated for it but we get to sit in a lot of those meetings so we get to bounce around seven to ten different rias on a quarterly basis and see their process and while a lot of them are great. What we ended up finding, because we got to hear that client coming back to us in six and 10 months, is saying, okay, our onboarding was great. We got in the door. I really felt attended to. The first six months were fantastic. It, it, it became less about performance. They, they walk in the door, they want to talk about performance of your stocks. But then 12 months down the road, they want to talk about your relationship and trust. Yeah. And, and it shifts very, very quickly because they get, okay, yes, you're good at investing money, but you're not good at talking to me about how you're investing money. And so we said that is one thing that absolutely has to be changed about the way we do it. So what we sat down and I said, okay, well, then you have to, you have to add process to that. There has to be a every X date we're doing Y thing because that's going to keep the client engaged. And we're going to say, and we do this for a reason. These aren't random. We, we sat down, we looked at the calendar. We said, when is a good time to talk about tax? When is a good time to talk about risk? When is a good time to talk about investments? When is a good time to talk about college planning and future and estate and all these other things that we felt needed to be baked in the process? And then we just said, every July, we're going to do this. And then every yeah. May, we're going to do that. And we started saying, this is how we're going to create a process. This is how we're going to show them that there's about six different topic areas that we can impact people's lives with. And doing it that way meant that we wouldn't fall off. You know, 12 months later, we wouldn't run out of things to talk about because we're right. driving it from that process first. And so the clients that have come in love that they're hearing more about their finances than their investments. And so when and, that and shift that happens in their mind, we're already in front of it. I, I love that mentality because it makes me also think of the concept of you can't eat an elephant in one bite, you know, it's one bite at a time. So if you sat them down in the first session and said, here's this half day training, here's all the stuff you need to know and go forth and do and call us when you need this, man, they would feel overwhelmed and it would not be effective. But now you've got them in, a, and I love on your website, you've got playbooks, you've got these, you know, a, 
scope and sequence and playbook and blueprint and checklist, things that you will help them understand. But you're doing it sequentially, and one thing probably builds off the other, and they feel like, wow, I, I'm, I'm being taken care of. Yeah, absolutely. And we found that there is, there's no way that a, two, a two-man firm, which is what we are today, is going to be able to deliver on that stuff without having these processes, yeah. without thinking about it in a sterile environment, documenting all of that, and then taking it out to the client. Say, you know, we have a client, they have, they have kids that are in their single digits, you know, six, four, three. You know, college is important, but not yeah. urgent. But so not how do we, how do yeah. we, exactly. So how do we discuss that with them? We have clients that are, their kids are 26 and 24. College is in the rearview mirror, but they still have debt. So we're yeah. having a different conversation there. And we said, okay, all of these are part of the same topic area, but they really have to be broken down into a process. And we said, okay, age is a pretty easier, linear way to look at, you know, your needs for college. And so we structured it that way. Yeah, but absolutely, we reuse a lot of the same material, but put it in the context of the client because we've been but, there before. We've already and, dug and, out of that well. And client A is having a certain conversation in May about their topic that it relates to them, but that same month of May, you're having a whole different conversation with a different client because they're at a different stage of life. So it's not just come to Kevin's firm and talk about taxes in May. No, it, it's, it's customized because it's based on what you need and based on your, your lifestyle, your future, all of those things. So I think that gives that impression of having that customized uh, playbook. You know what's nice for us as a business is that we're not having to – I mean, we're getting really deep on this topic once a year, yeah. which, which might seem fleeting, um, but it actually drives deeper results for us because in the whole month of December or in the whole month of July, we're having and sharing the same best practices. So we're getting to be you know, experts. We're not picking it up here and then picking it up there and, and, and really doing it in a fleeting, you know, ad hoc and – and trying to be responsive to the moment, we're trying to be responsive to our process. And yeah. that process allows us to get really, really good at tax when it's time to be talking about tax and really, really, really good at estate planning when it's time to talk about estate planning. Yeah, I, I just think that that is, you know, those those set protocols. And it, it kind of gets probably you have clients that over the years, they kind of get in, you know, they're probably calling you going, hey, isn't it about time to, to you know, start talking about because they start looking forward to that, knowing that it's, it um, helps them clarify where they are, where they've come from and where they need to go. Yep, absolutely. I, th I just think that too many times um, that people come in and talk to someone about money and it's like they get things thrown at them, pushed at them. And like you were saying before, it's like they're incentivized for one thing over the other. When in reality, why don't we go ahead and see what you need and, and where you want to go? And then we'll help you understand how to get there. So it's not necessarily pushing at uh, things at them. So that's what I think is the power of what your program is. So um, talk a little bit about, you mentioned kids and college planning. Um, is there a specific, you know, time frame ahead of college that you should, you know, should be starting to plant? Obviously when they're born, you know, you, the earlier the better, but when is some of those sweet spots? Uh, well, you know, there's, there's pretty big natural breaks um, in a, in a person's life, right? Um, I, uh, I'm a planner and I'm paranoid and college college has been an important part of what I've coached my kids and our relatives and literally any client that's ever walked in the door. Uh, I believe in it. And, I, and, and let's, let's, let's delimit college. I believe in higher education. I don't care what yeah. it is. Um, just the experience and the, the skill set and whatever you want to go do, go do it for, for four years in your twenties. Um, that being said, obviously day one, is the best possible day. And for, and for me, it was, I started my kids 529 plan under my own social security and transferred it to them before they were born. So day minus, you know, Susan, my wife said, Hey, we're pregnant. <laughs> like, 529. In the morning, she took the test and was very excited. And I said, Oh, awesome. Let's start a college plan. <laughs> First thing I did when I got to work, wow. started one. And then uh, yeah. about a week later, we found out that it was twins. And uh, so I had to redo the paperwork, which is identical at the time. They're not named and they don't have social security. So, and submit it. And then I get a weird call from the 529 company going, 
you know, we have a duplicate. I'm like, it's not a duplicate, it's oh. twins. So I have to like unwind <laughs> their process. <laughs> and, wow. But that was, that was the day. I said, we got to start now. Uh, and then, you know, I'm kind of a, a curmudgeon. I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a, uh, a Grinch around Christmas because people are like, what should we get the kids? They want toys. They want that. I'm like, Call, money for college. <laughs> I told everyone <laughs> and, and, and they don't listen to me and that's okay. But yeah. I toe the line and I say money for college, money for college, money for college. And so, um, that's, uh, if you ask, if you ask anybody around our house, what's, what's dad want for the kids for, for school, you know, it's money for college. And so, yeah. Well, yeah. um, I think that if you said you should plan, start planning for college when, you know, the, the, the baby is born, then if the client doesn't follow that, then maybe they're going to start way sooner than what they would have without that mindset. So, you know, shoot for the moon, you'll at least you'll hit a star if you miss. So that's great advice. But too many times people go, oh, hey, it's a senior year and uh, I guess we're heading off to college. What should we do? Way too late. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And so, and then there's obviously, you know, our, our checklist shows some other important windows for doing that. You know, college becomes a little more clear, you know, if it's, you know, trade school that you're passionate about or a specific college, usually by high school. Uh, in the first two years of high school, it's, you know, are you going into college, right? I mean, like, are, is, is, that, is that on the docket or is that a conversation we're having? And then certainly by your junior and senior year, it's to which tier of college are you going to be applying? Mm -hmm. And so looking at all of those in, in that context is, is certainly helpful. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. We understand how, how people are. We understand that there's resources and tools at the schools that help. And so we want to marry up a lot of our process for helping the family talk and plan around that, you know, with what they're doing already. We're not, we're not trying to break from that. And so a lot of it just marries up with certain academic calendars and testing schedules and things like that. And just putting as many arrows in our clients quivers as possible. Well, having the blueprint, and the checklist sure helps. And so I know that's one of the uh, uh, resources on your website. So let's wrap up Kevin with what's the best way that someone, if they're hearing some of these planning and proactive approaches that you take in college and business planning, what's the best way that someone could reach out, connect with you and, uh, and learn more about your practice. Yeah, they can email me. I'm Kevin at investmentwithinsight.com. Uh, investmentwithinsight.com is also our website. And there you can also find um, our phone number, which is 720-314-8033. They can call. They can email. Uh, you can go to our website, and there's all of our contact information there. There's a little chat window. It goes directly to, to me and Peter. Um, so somebody will somebody will start chatting with you. Some people like to just ask a quick question. That's a perfect place to do that. Um, we have a, a network of partners. So a lot of people find their, their way to us through, uh, through a handful of different, um, you know, academic partners or legal partners and tax partners. So there's that too. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Kevin. It was really a pleasure talking with you. Yep, absolutely. You have a great day, Mike. Thank you. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.